I will say that is a quick, a quick motorhome. <laughs> There's a lot. Of, that's a lot of power for a uh, for a class class C 24 foot 24 B uh, motorhome. That that quite moves. Hey folks, it's Chad here, and I have a little bit of a different video. If you're if you're a subscriber to the channel, you're used to seeing Airstream videos from me, and believe it or not, I do sell other things than Airstream. But I love Airstream, so I love making videos about them. But I did want to do a video of this 2023 Integra Odyssey 24B. This is one of the shortest, I think it's the shortest floor plan that you can get from Integra on the Ford chassis. Uh, and the 24B is going to be really just in general one of the shortest floor plans um, out there. Now, one of the things I love about this one is even though it's a short floor plan, it's still very much a floor plan for families. Or, or for a couple who might want to bring you know some grandkids with them this floor plan is perfect for that so let's jump into a walk around of the outside and then we'll jump on the inside and at the end of the video we're going to do a test drive so stay around for the test drive so we have here the 23 integra odyssey 24b now with the in, the odyssey line uh, this was the entry level to integra integra's motorhome lineup as far as gas motorhomes go uh, they just came out with this year, the Odyssey SE. Uh, that one's going to come in on a Chevy chassis, and it's going to, as price-wise, come in under the regular Odyssey. Now, the regular Odyssey, like this one, it's going to have a fiberglass roof. That is one thing that's going to set this apart from the SE model, as well as the, a lot of the other competitors, because you have that full fiberglass, full, full fiberglass roof up, up there. You're also going to have a full fiberglass molded front cap. And essentially what that means is there's no exposed um, connection points except for right here where it connects to the back, the sidewall that goes all the way around and, and it'll be something similar to that. Uh, you can see there on top. But as far as your seams underneath, like right here in this area, there's no seam. There's no seam up here. The seam is actually, actually going to be below. What that basically means for you for water to get into that front cab, it's got to come down the wall, make a turn, and then come all the way back, make another turn, go up into here and come back. So it's not likely that you're going to have a water leak in one of the areas like in these front corners. That's always been a problem spot for a lot of Class C manufacturers in the day. Uh, across this front here, you're not going to really see a leak opportunity. Now, this does have a windshield, which is awesome. It looks great on the inside. If you're inside the coach while you're going down the road, you can see out uh, just an incredible view. But that is a leak point. Um, if you're kind of wondering like, hey, is that a leak point? Yeah, it, it is definitely a leak point. It's a window, but it is a fiberglass. Um, it, sorry, it is an automo automotive bonded windshield. So it is a better windshield than what we saw in, in the past with like Winnebago, for instance. They had a front windshield and that one was notorious for leaking but it also wasn't a uh, fiberglass mold and it wasn't um, an automotive windshield and automotive bond. Now on the four chassis, it is on the E450 chassis. They upgraded the engine uh, a few years back to a V8, 7.3 liter V8. It's the Godzilla of engines, uh, 350 horsepower, somewhere around there, 400, 460 foot-pounds of torque, somewhere around there. Now, if you're looking for the specs on the Odyssey, uh, just go down in the description and click that, click the link that will take you to the specifications. That's going to list everything from uh, lengths to tank sizes, all that kind of stuff that's kind of boring to hear uh, in the video. Now, all of your Integra floor plans will pretty much have the outside TV. Uh, it does have kind of the old school clip here instead of magnets. Uh, I think on the Steam, you see magnets. The Odyssey, you're going to see the kind of that old school clip. And then you've got the TV right there. Now, underneath the TV is going to be your propane tank and propane fills right there. The bleed valve is right there. And then beside that is going to be some storage. Let's see if I can get in there. So good deep storage and a power plug right there, too. Uh, furnace there. That's the back side of the refrigerator. That's gonna be your water heater. Now this is a tank water heater, so not tankless like you see on a lot of your, you know, basically all your airstreams now. It does have a tank. And then coming out a little bit further, you're gonna have some more storage. 
actually two levels of storage here. Now this isn't super deep, but it is just nice storage that you have. And then under that, there is a propane quick, dis uh, quick disconnect so that you can add, you know, plug in, hook up an outside grill uh, heater, something of that nature, if you wanted to do that. And then some more storage. Now this is good, fairly deep storage. You're also gonna find your low point drains in here. So something to think about as you're using that storage. And coming to the back, um, Integra does add that Kurt hitch. It's a 7,500 pound hitch. So you are able to tow uh, some good size vehicles with this if you want to. It's also gonna have the integrated backup camera standard and it's gonna have um, side view cameras standard. And I like where the side view cameras are located on the Odyssey, they're right here. So the same thing on the other side. In the Esteem, it upgrades to a chrome mirror in the, the cameras in there. Um, I mean, it works, but I actually find that that, I think, gives you a better view when you're actually going down the road um, for your side view camera. And then you do have a ladder because that is a full walkable roof up there. And then you have, you have marker lights. You've got a seven pin cable there. It is pre-wired, but it does not have the backup or the braking controller. So that is something that you would need to add yourself. And then you're going to have your city fill here. And then that's your city connection. Black tank flush is right there. You'll have to, there, there's nothing to distinguish this except for the labels. So make sure those stay, labels stay on. Hot and cold water uh, for your outside shower is in there. And of course, this is gasoline, so unleaded fuel. Your larger storage compartment is gonna be on this side. Good size storage, kind of goes all the way across. Not all the way across, but it goes over, over yonder. And then your uh, valves that will determine what the city water connection is gonna do is right there. So this is one of those types where that one valve, this one connection here, um, can do multiple things from filling your fresh water tank to being the city water connection um, to winterization, all those types of things. And then you've got your black and gray tank flush right here. Um, your black and tank, uh, gray tank outlet, not flush. So remember, always pull the black first and then the gray. And you can see some of the tanks down there. There is a 12 volt uh, heating pad on the gray and black tanks. And I'm, I'm suspecting the freshwater tank as well. So if you are in a cold climate, you can continue camping. And this is going to be, because it's a class, it's going to be a 30 amp. So your 30 amp plug is there. There's an outlet right down there. And then you've got another power connection here. And then you've got your TV inlet for campsite TV. Now, all of your integrators are going to come standard with a generator. The Odyssey is going to come with a 4,000 watt generator. Another low point drain is right there. Now, a little bit more storage, again, on the uh, driver's side. Now this storage, or the campsite side, all of the storage below here is gonna be under the slide room. So the slide room is in, but this has essentially full wall slide. Instead of it being two separate slides, which on the 24 foot floor plan, a lot of your, um, a lot of your manufacturers will put a split there and there's two slides. With Integra, it's one long slide that goes all the way back. Uh, I think that's just a preference. I don't know that I would say there's a pro or a con to it being a full wall slide outside of it just being one slide to go out. And it does come with the slide topper as well from the factory, that's standard. The only option really on the Odyssey is gonna be whether or not you get leveling. There's the E450 uh, tag there. Now, as I move to the inside, I wanna mention a couple of things. This does have the easy drive from Integra. Um, now there's an easy drive elite that you're gonna see on the Steam, uh, on the, the Odyssey is just one, a couple of things less, but what you are gonna get with this is helper springs on the back, uh, two helper, or helper spring on each side to help the ride, uh, help with body roll. It's also gonna have a computerized balanced drive shaft, which is a big deal because they do extend these drive shafts a lot of times with these floor plans. And uh, if they don't computerize balance it, you're gonna feel the vibration as you go down the road. And then there's also uh, some bump stops that they add to the back there as well. Now. If you're interested in more in the easy drive, just click that link below. On the handle here, I kind of mentioned this because for, for a lot of customers I've found, when they first come out, they like pull on it thinking that it's locked and they'll be like, hey, that one's locked. It's not locked. These are actually kind of tough to open. 
uh, for some reason. So what I, the trick I have is I put my thumb just right here against this flat spot and then it gives me enough leverage to be able to open it. So just something to think about, something to know. A little insider trick, turn all the lights on. So kind of coming in, you're gonna have batteries in here uh, and it'll be one coach battery. I think there's enough room to add two there. These things are always so hard to open. Oh, okay. That was easy enough that time. So yeah, one battery there and there's enough room to add a second battery. Now that's gonna be a traditional lead acid battery. So if you're wanting an AGM or you know maybe upgrade to 200 amp lithiums, that's something you can do. There's probably gonna be a few extra things you need to do as far as charge controllers and things like that. Um, but there is room there if you wanna do that. The step is powered, it automatically comes out. It does have an on off switch right here. So if you wanna set this up to be um, like campsite and it not go in and out every time you, you close the door, you can flip that to off. Owen is just gonna have the power step going in and out every time. And you've got a ba battery disconnect right here. You've got a quick, easy light switch to, op to turn on inside lights. And then your awning will pop, is a powered awning and it comes out very easy. And it does, as you can see, it has the LED lights that go across. Now those lights are gonna be at the the camper side sometimes they're going to be at the um like the end of the awning and you won't actually see them until it's all the way out i prefer it to this side uh on the like cl close to the camper and the reason is uh you can't always run your awning out like for instance i'm pretty close to that tree there but i may like if i was closer to a tree there and i wanted to run my awning out and my lights are in that strip there and I couldn't run the awning all the way out, then I won't see the, the lights, like the lights aren't gonna be visible. So I kind of like it, you know, depending on the, the type of, I think the Gerard is at the bottom, you can still see it. Um, I do like them against there. That's a nice touch with Odyssey. There is a step light that is right there as I walk up into the coach. Now this is with the slide room in. Uh, everybody likes to see the slide room in to kind of get a feel uh, for how much room you have now one thing about the 24b the bed has this this kind of lower half which i'll show you in a second that um that folds out to make the bed the full length um you're not going to be able to sleep on the bed going down the road now if you wanted to sleep you can turn the dinette into a, a sleeping space and sleep there if you wanted to sleep going down the road but it would be hard to do it there uh, in the actual bed you could also sleep up here theoretically if you wanted to that's that windshield right there so where the windshield is there's a blind that that's powered and comes down that's pretty neat as far as space goes there's plenty of room to get back to the refrigerator even with the slide in i can open the fridge and we can get to the bathroom easily into the bathroom now it does it is a little bit of a squeeze like i have to go sideways but even somebody my size fits in there just fine to get into the bathroom now i'm going to run the slide room out and let you see kind of the time it takes to run the slide out, extend. Now, as it's running out, I just want to mention, um, you know, with RV1 at Greensboro, we're also at Airstream at Greensboro, if you're, that's kind of confusing. We're the two stores in one location. Uh, being a part of RV1, uh, we are a part of one of the largest dealer groups that sells Integra Motorhomes, uh, and really, most of your manufacturers out there like Jayco um, and, and Grand Design. With that said, if you are in the market for Integra, we're going to be able to get you the best pricing possible uh, for an Integra motorhome if you're in the market for Integra. And we're going to be able to pay the most for your trade if you have a trade, uh, you know, travel trailer or another motorhome that you might want to trade in. And we do work all over the country. Uh, we're not just North Carolina. We are all over. And there is the slide all the way out. So this is the farmhouse white interior. Uh, there's two two interior options, the farmhouse, and then uh, there's kind of a traditional wood look. Um, I'm going to fold the bed out. And I think you could easily leave your blankets and things on the bed as you fold that up if you needed to. I do like the windows. Lots of Lots of good light and windows to come in and as well as right there in front of the sink. And one of my favorite spots to have a window is right across in front of the sink. So you can look out and down um, to see, you know, kiddos out there playing 
or just see out while you're camping. Now, when you first come in, you're gonna have your kind of main control panel here. You've got your water heater, electric and propane, leave electric on all the time, uh, and then turn the propane on when you're taking a, a shower. Water pump is right there. If you wanna turn that on and off, and then that's your tank heater switch there. That's your slide room control, and then your generator out control. Now, as far as TV goes, um, it's right there. That is, uh, well, that's a place for a TV to go. It is on a bracket. So you can bring it out. Let's see how far we can bring it out. We can bring it out to about right there if we wanted to. So, I mean, if you, you know, you've got cushions, these seats turn around here. They're not the easiest thing to turn around, but they do turn around. And um, there's cushions that will sit in place, kind of booster seats to get those higher. And then you could see the TV. It, yeah, so a lot of a lot of spots that we see the TVs on this, these types of floor plans is actually right there. And uh, oddly enough, I would like it better there. I'm not a fan of the TV being in that spot either, uh, but I like that actually better than here. But that's where the TV is on a 24B. Yeah, hey, you're going camping. You're not sitting inside to watch TV. I, I think that's the argument <laughs> there for that <laughs> for the for the TV placement. Look at this. Lights there. Now the, the U-shaped dinette, very nice dinette. It doesn't come out. Like you can't move it out. You can turn it, you can rotate it, but it doesn't pull out. Uh, there is enough room there to, to set, uh, to seat four people. Um, definitely a few with kids. And then you do have seat belts in this location here. There's also a, a spot to, to hook, to set up a, a child safety seat. Anywhere that you have seats with an Integra, it's gonna be connected to steel. So that steel is gonna be connected down into steel. So that's one thing that Integra does that I really likes so it. Any place that they put a seat belt, it's gonna be connected to metal, so it's gonna be safe. Uh, there is storage underneath, uh, right there. So you do have some storage underneath. Let's see if this one's easier to, yep, let me get that one open. Some storage in there, you actually see the metal too for the seat belt. And uh, now these windows here will open and the window across will open as well. Now, continuing with the dinette, we've got some nice storage, deep storage right there. And then this is a pantry. Um, it's, I guess you could also use this for clothes if you want to see, but it's a, it's a really nice pantry with, with full pull-out drawers. I don't think you see this a lot with a what we would consider an entry level Class C motorhome. And then beside that is gonna be more just kind of folding storage. You could add tubs there, make that even more usable. And then uh, storage in the drawers. And I was looking for these. There's where they hid them during transit. So that one goes right yonder. And this one goes right there. So you've got the cool little rack here that you can put things to dry on and then you've got your cutting board that goes into the sink and then that's the microwave tray I'm guessing they put that in there for transit so that it doesn't fall around that's your pack that comes with it another nice deep drawer now storage underneath the bed there is a little bit of storage under the bed actually i shouldn't say a little that's quite a bit of storage uh, chairs would fit in there perfectly those kind of folding chairs that collapse into itself good windows there additional storage above and you've got your reading lights there as well and then one of the things i really do like about the 24b is the back wall and the wardrobe that they give you that's the ladder for the for the front sleeping area right there and basically double wardrobe there's one of your cushions for the the front seat full extension drawers again and integra does do a you know a good job in building the they are stapled you know that's something to look at they are stapled they're not tongue and groove but they're solid wood solid door fronts very nice very very nicely constructed is what i'm trying to say there there's a little step up right there some wires that hang down just something to think about now there's power plug there that's probably a perfect spot for a cpap if you need a cpap when you're sleeping and then there is a um, curtain that will pull around 
and kind of close off the bed area. If you're wondering what that looks like, that's what that looks like. And it's very simple, just pulls. There's a little strap here to hold it in place, just Velcro, just a little Velcro strap right there. Now on your AC system, on the Odyssey, you're just gonna get this uh, kind of old school AC system. Um, you could easily update that if you wanted to. And then you've got a progressive dynamic inverter that comes uh, standard light switch back here. You can also run your slide in and out right, right there as well as in the front where I showed you. Now for the kitchen area, tremendous kitchen for a 24B. Uh, lots of good storage. You've got storage underneath. That's for winterization, that hose there, if you see that. You've got a little um, sponge holder there. Looks like we had a, either an extra one or one come off somewhere. And then your full extension drawers, there's your TV remotes. And they are smart TVs. And another one below. And you're gonna have the propane oven, Safarion oven. It's got the little light for the knobs, that's cool. Three burner stove top with a little back splash. I do like that they add a splash, uh, whatever you, protection here along the side. They always, you know, it's always funny to either see it just on the back or you have this splash guard, but you don't have a splash guard here uh, for when you know, you're cooking. And then I also love that they're giving you a nice large residential size microwave now it's a traditional microwave it's not a convection oven because you have the propane oven below you've got storage above and good storage there there's where the plug plugs in for the microwave and more storage above fairly deep storage about half my arm gets in there and then you do have some storage over the steps right there so Great kitchen for a 24 foot motorhome. And because of the floor plan, if you just know, it's super open in here. There's a ton of room to move around uh, when you are in, you know, you are camping. Now this is kind of a studio style floor plan, meaning the bedroom, the dinette and the kitchen's all in kind of one space. Uh, but it's, it's easy to get around. It's easy to drive, um, easy to park. And it's a great size. You can go to about any park that you want to go to uh, with this floor plan, the Odyssey. Now the bed that's over the cab here, there's this little net here just to kind of help kit, catch anyone falling. Uh, that can sleep 750 pounds. Most of your uh, competitors are going to be around 500 pounds or less, but 750 pounds there. There is power and USB charging up here as well as a little cup holder and a little bit of storage right there as well as the basket another cup holder that is your overhead light for this section here and then this this part there that just pulls down to cover this space it's up in that position for when you're driving so it's easier to get in and out uh, when you're going down the road now this is just a little seat belt style system and then it will come off and you can store this guy Ooh, up here, right there. And then this is all lined, so there's fiberglass behind it. So it's all lined with this nice plastic material. It goes all the way around. And then you've got your uh, fiberglass roofing, you know, roof or ceiling material that comes down, uh, very similar to the rest of the coach. There is one connection point right there for that those two sections coming together and uh, AC 15,000 BTU if it's a single AC this one's single so that should be a 15,000 BTU again check the specifications that link in the in the description for all the specifications it is ducted now this is like a true duck I can kind of see up in there that's not just foam which is nice to see a lot of these are just going to be uh, it's just going to be cut out in the foam that's actually ducted there are inside speakers as well as outside speakers. The refrigerator, this looks like it's going to be somewhere around six cubic foot. It is a propane and 110 refrigerator. That'll be an auto setup. You just kind of turn it on and it will pick whatever source it has to be able to cool down uh, your refrigerator. Now for the bathroom, when the bed is out, 
this door opens, you know, like 90, full 90, so it's easier to get in. It is kind of at diagonal, so as you walk in, you're going to see kind of a diagonal look. For me and my size, I kind of turn a little bit to get through that door. You got a nice large window here in the bathroom. It is a porcelain toilet. Paper towel is right there. I'm going to sit down. And as far as the position of the commode, it's a perfect position. There's plenty of room with this setup. I can close the door, no problems there. Of course, you can leave the door open if you want to. You know, live wild, live crazy. Toilet paper is in a good spot. Van button, fan button is in a good spot. Um, yeah, it's a comfortable position. Have no problems with that. And your vanity here, you've got power there. Another little sponge makeup holder, maybe. And then get some storage below that area. Right yonder. And then a nice mirror. And then kind of a medicine cabinet style uh, storage there. Probably a half an inch or so thickness. You could definitely put, like I would call this medicine size. It's, it's medicine size. Um, and a nice large, large mirror. Easily see yourself in that mirror. Now as far as the shower goes, it is a nice large shower with a glass door oh there's a there's a little sh little travel travel lock there you definitely want to use the travel lock because that's going to slide back and forth for sure so nice size shower uh it, there is a step up it's going to be almost kind of knee height there as far as the step up goes so there's a step up there if you if that's something that concerns uh now there's plenty of height in the shower even as you step up into it so 5'10", 5'11", uh, probably with shoes on, plenty of room. So if you're tall and looking for a shower that is tall enough for you, this is definitely going to be the shower for you. Uh, adjustable height on the shower head. You can bring it up even higher. You also have a clothing um, bar here if you want to have another spot for clothes to hang out. You've got a little soap holder. Uh, some storage here for your different uh, soaps and things. Now this doesn't have the little bar going across to hold it in place. So these are going to be for when you're camping only, not for when you're traveling. You'll need to take that down and put it somewhere. But plenty of room. I could turn, you know, I'm a good size. There's a ton of room. You could have two people in here if you want, if you needed to. The floor is also nice and solid. Uh, I've noticed. Don't feel any give on that floor as I stepped into the shower. So a good size shower, good size bathroom. Definitely adequate for a 24 foot floor plan. But not only that, I think it goes above and beyond a 25 foot floor plan shut that door there so great floor plan if you're looking for a small easy to drive go anywhere style class c motorhome uh, this is definitely one to look at msrp on this is going to be 161.9 somewhere around there so let's jump to the test drive part of the video now as i start the test drive section or i guess portion of this um of the video i want to kind of talk about the dash a little bit so we've got this is the ford kind of classic look uh, updated steering wheel updated ford chime for 24 or 23 i should say sorry now mirrors are powered that controls right there you've got your headlight controls here off and then there's an the auto function uh, you can set your dash brightness right there is an auxiliary start here now what that will do if you happen to run the battery dead say leave the lights on or something like that you can press this button it will basically connect it to connect the engine to your house battery that's stored right there and then allow you to start the engine off of the house battery nice feature especially for um you know if you accidentally uh you know leave your lights on or something of that nature uh power door locks powered windows the driver's side is auto the passenger side is not auto and that's auto down only it looks like uh and then on your passenger side now if you're wondering like how comfortable is it passenger side the well the wheel well or the engine bay here does kind of impede your feet area there 
So something to kind of know, you know, whoever's going to be riding in the passenger side the most, you're not going to have as much feet room down here, as much leg room. If you look at a class A motorhome, like a Vision or a Vision XL Integra, you have a lot more room in the cockpit area. Now this is going to feel more like a truck. So for a lot of folks, this is going to be really comfortable because it's going to be familiar. Now looking out of a class C, you do feel like you're kind of in a dugout, right? You've got the overhead bed area that's going to come out a little ways. It doesn't come all the way out. Like there's there's more space out that way, but you do sit lower, on, uh, you know, closer to the ground with um, with the class C versus a, a class A. You're going to sit much higher, but you're also going to have a much larger window. So something to just kind of know when you're looking at a class C. Now uh, AC controls are here. You're just going to kind of old school set that temperature where you want it to be, and then you'll set this you know, where you want it to go as far as direction goes. Uh, fan control is right there. This is going to be a charging station for cell phones and tablets, USB-C and USB-A. Uh, this is not getting up to the radio. That's going to actually be this USB here. This one will connect to the radio, which gives you Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's a nice radio. Uh, my only um, critique with this radio is it's a little slow. That That's my only critique, really, uh, you know, it's just when you kind of when you touch it and you expect it to do something, um, it's just it's slightly slow in its interaction. Uh, you know, it's not as tablet feel. And then this is um, kind of a I don't know what they call it, it's TFT tile style screen. Um, so it's not quite as like sharp as some of uh, what we're used to in a lot of our new newer modern cars. Uh, but overall, for an RV, uh, it's a good. It's a good upgrade compared to uh, what you're getting in a lot of other manufacturers. It's a large screen. It's uh, nine inches, based almost nine inches. Um, it has HDMI input. It has the smartphone um, mirror technology. And then this is also going to give you uh, your side view camera. So I just cranked the engine. I'm not sure if you can hear it. That This new V8 is not the quietest engine Um yeah, it's just not the quietest engine ever. It's it's a fairly good good. It's a fairly loud engine. So something you might want to test drive this, get a feel for the volume of the engine. But I wanted to show you your side view camera. So that's going to be the passenger side. Uh, that is going to be, let's see, uh, and that's your driver side. And the engine just kind of calmed down a little bit. You know, I guess it warmed up. And then your backup is going to be uh, good. There we go. And then that's your backup camera there. Good, great backup camera. And you can bring up the backup camera um, by hitting rear camera there. And that will bring up the backup camera while you're going down the road if you want to see behind you. And then home button there, volume, alt, which is also going to be uh, mirror off. Uh, options takes you into you know, your option area. It is ready for a Sirius XM radio. And then you've got a track and then you've got the voice button. So if you have uh, your phone plugged in with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can press that button to bring up Siri or uh, whatever the Android version of that is. And then you've got a basic um, rear view mirror here, which is really just giving you a, a view into the back of the coach. Um, not really, not really giving you like there's not a there's not a way to even look out the back there. It's it's only only showing you that. So if you need to see behind you you're going to want to hit the rear view camera angle and then you can see you know, behind you. But this doesn't have like the digital mirror or anything like that. Not on the Odyssey. Not yet at least. A little bit of storage there. You got a little bit of change storage. You've got good cup holder spaces here. Uh, another cup holder there. Great storage for carrying things when you're traveling. Another little cubby right there. Does have a glove box. That is right there. It looks like a spot for a manual or something yeah spot for the manual to go you do have airbags on both sides you've got these large truck style vents as well and then there is a little bit of storage in the doors as well um yeah so i mean it's it's a ford you've got reading lights there you've got your sun visors right there and, and of course you know the plastic is still in here it'll be in here until we sell this but when the plastic's not here, it feels more open. You can put that bed down. It's going to feel quite a bit more closed. So let's get going on the test drive. 
Now with the test drive, I'm just going to kind of, it's just going to be a shot of me. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the motorhome and the way it feels as far as drive goes. Um, that is the seatbelt light or seatbelt thing telling me to put seatbelt on. I got to jump out and move some cones so I can get out of our parking area. I'll be right back. Now this is my first time doing a test drive video um, and I'm going to copy Doug, how do you say his last name, M Miro, M Miro or something? Anyway, he does car reviews, does a lot of like really fancy car reviews and uh, he just uses one camera and I think that's going to be a good option. You guys tell me what you think about the test drive section of this video. This is the first time I've done this with any motorhome. And, uh, and then also tell me in the comments what you would like to see that I didn't show you um, in the comments. For instance, I didn't used to do an inside slide room shot on a motorhome and uh, somebody left a comment saying, hey, show the inside with the, um, with the slide room in. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. People are gonna wanna see that. Now, something about Integra, that I want to mention, um, and one of Integra's claim to fame, fame to claims, fame, fame. You know, when I'm doing these videos, I forget how to talk sometimes. So uh, don't make fun of me because there's a lot going on when you're making a video. Hopefully the camera is also not too shaky. It's looking pretty shaky right now, but we'll see when I get back. Um, but one of Integra's claim to fames is it being the quietest riding motorhome in the industry on the market and uh you know i'm gonna at some point i think i'm gonna get one of those db meters so that you're so i can show like okay here's how loud this motorhome is what i can say about this one right now and you know it's a smaller floor plan there's not quite as much back there to shake around and to move um the only thing i really hear right now is mostly just engine noise um and you should be able to hear be able to hear that um that audio coming in now one thing i noticed immediately with this updated ford chassis the steering wheel the steering is much tighter than that older chassis uh that had the v10 that one that one always seemed to be you know there's a lot of play in the steering wheel this is very tight feels like i'm driving a truck the mirrors stick out real wide on this and you've got the little helper mirror too uh, i can see i can see quite well uh throughout both both mirrors I can see fine. And then of course, uh, the blind spot camera is quite nice as well. You know, with the Class C, your sides are sticking out a little bit um, on the side. So you can't like look back to see, you know, if there's something in your blind spot, you've got to you, you've use your mirror. So you've got both the little blind spot mirror on the, on the actual main mirror, and you've got the camera and the Integra uh, the side view cameras that are standard. So that, I love that about it. Um, very quiet, just a little, some cr uh, creaks back there as to be expected with a house being on the motorhome. This, this rides, it's rides quite smooth. It's a fairly windy day too. So, um, I'll get a feel for the helper springs back there too, because this helper springs should help with, um, with the, wind blowing the cross breeze it should help a little bit with that as well i mean no i mean it, it drives well um it drives drives like a like a big box you know steering's tight on these new four chassis the steering is quite tight um for a motorhome right the the ride is good i don't feel any vibration from the um drive train which is good that camera it looks like it's shaking like crazy. So I think this camera feed is going to be very shaky. I'll try to uh, stabilize it in post as much as I can. So I'm turning onto the highway here and I'm going to really give it some, some gas and, uh, and, and not talk so you can see here loudness. Um, I will say that is a quick 
a quick motor home. <laughs> There's a lot. That's a lot of power for a uh, for a class class C 24 foot 24 B uh, motor home. That that quite moves. Um, now I'm going to run the speed limit because you know safety. But running down, this is Interstate 40. There's some wind noise. You know, it's a motor home. But uh, not. A, I mean, the back of the coach is quiet. And I mean, yes, I do feel wind. You know, wind like there's a cross breeze that way. I felt that. And the more, the more you drive motor homes, the more you just naturally compensate for that wind whether it's wind blowing or it's a truck passing, uh, the more you do it, the more, you, the more you'll compensate for it and it, it'll be kind of second nature. But this, this the, I'm, I'm thinking the helper springs with the easy drive system does help this kind of stay um, fairly planted, you know, going straight. You know, now as far as the, as far as engine noise goes, the engine is loud. It's a loud V8. Um, if you like the sound of a big V8 engine, you're gonna love um, the sound of the V8 that's in the Odyssey. And, and, and I say Odyssey, like it's not the only one. Any, you know, all of your newer Class Cs um, are gonna that are built on Ford, which is you know 99% of the market, uh, will have this engine in it, the new V8. It's loud. It doesn't matter which manufacturer you buy. It's gonna be loud. Uh, sounds cool, but it's also loud. So something to think about. Uh, that torque and horsepower that this engine has, it should help hold the speed quite well. And that's something to know if you're uh, new to driving, you know, towing or driving a motorhome in the mountains, you're not gonna, you don't wanna ride the brakes. If you ride the brakes, the brakes are gonna overheat and they'll actually end up vibrating. But the, the, the um, caliber, no, not caliber, rotor, I think is what it's called. Anyway, it will heat up to the point that it actually like warps. And then it will um, it start to like vibrate as you're trying to brake. And then once it gets to a certain temperature, uh, the brakes basically fail. Uh, they stop they stop braking because uh, you know brakes are friction based. Uh, so what you want to do when you're um, when you're driving down a mountain, uh, you want to gear down. And then and with this setup, it's just you're going to actually bring the um, gear stick down to like two. And you can go into manual. So there's drive, which is just a, a manual transmission, right? Or automatic transmission, sorry, not manual. Automatic transmission. So it's doing everything itself. I can go down into manual. And once I go to manual, I've got these uh, plus and negative buttons. So I can um, control the transmission myself. Now, this is a six-speed automatic transmission, which is uh, new. It was a, um, I think it was a five speed with overdrive or four speed automatic with overdrive it's one of those um but now it's a six speed six speed automatic transmission so what i can do in that manual mode is i can gear down to you know third gear or even second gear and the engine itself the rpms of the engine is going to actually help reduce the speed of the motorhome as i'm going down the mountain uh, you want to maintain a, a slower speed going downhill. Uh, you don't want to go 65, 70 miles per hour flying downhill because it's harder to slow down when you're going that fast. The other thing that you want to do is you want to do uh, basically speed zones is a good, a, a good way to think about it. But say I'm trying to maintain 50 miles per hour. So I start at 50, I'm geared down to like third third gear and it's running up around you know 3500 rpm so i know i'm getting some good engine resistance uh and then it kind of slowly coasts its way up to 60. Well, what i don't want to do is ride the brakes the whole time i'm getting up to 60 because i'm adding heat to the brakes uh unnecessary heat to the brakes what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna at 60 i'm gonna hard brake like hard air brake and I'm gonna slow the motorhome back down to 50 and then let off the brakes. Keeping the engine, you know, keeping the transmission at third, you know, third gear, or even second gear if you need to, uh, to be able to maintain speed. But what I don't wanna do is be at 50 miles per hour and then just ride the brakes trying to maintain 50. 
let it get up to 55 or 60 and then brake and get back down to 50 let off the brakes let the brakes cool and then if it creeps back up to 60 you're going to break back down you know break do another brake application and get it back down to 50. don't ride the brakes if you ride the brakes they're going to overheat and fail um, and then make sure you use the transmission and engine uh, to maintain to help maintain speed and this is going to be true for motorhomes or uh trucks if you're towing with a truck uh going down a hill and you can even use this like you know when my wife and i go up north we have family up north we come down come down uh the mountains through west virginia and stuff like i use i use the uh engine the transmission just in my truck or in her car uh, so that i'm not riding you know having to ride the brakes or do a bunch of brake applications i'll just throw it throw it in a lower gear and then let the engine maintain speed so the same thing in a motorhome same thing towing an RV in a truck, uh, use the transmission and then do brake applications and try to maintain that 50 mile, 50 mile per hour speed uh, instead of going super fast. Well, if you've made it to this point of the video, I've parked back in the spot where the, the 24B is sitting currently. Uh, you can see it off the highway if you're coming down. Um, I just wanna th say thank you for watching uh, thanks for kind of enduring the vibrations uh, of the test drive being the first time I've done it. Uh, I learned something from this. I learned quite a bit. Uh, if you have any suggestions, uh, leave those in the comment. I welcome those. Uh, any positive uh, criticism, absolutely welcome it. But if you have any questions about the 24B, uh, any of the, of the other Integra uh, motorhomes that are out there, feel free to reach out. All of my contact information is down there below in the description and if you're looking for the specifications for the 24b that's also going to be down there uh, in the description i uh, hope you are having a great week we'll talk soon thanks bye